Hello, welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. I'm Chris Primo, and today I'm going to be continuing this mini uh, series, I suppose, of historical New York Times crosswords taken from the week of uh, October 12th to 17th, I suppose, of 2015, in which uh, Times crossword con uh, contributors were asked, what would you like to do in a daily Times crossword that has never been done before? And then we uh, got a week of interesting, unique puzzles. So I'm going to be uh, solving another one of these today, this one, uh, the Tuesday puzzle. So still, uh, as with yesterday's Monday puzzle, should be relatively approachable, not too difficult, but maybe just a touch uh, more challenging than we solved yesterday. And uh, I'm very interested to see what this is. I, I would have solved I would have solved this puzzle back in 2015, but I certainly don't remember what it contains now. So we'll find out. We'll find out together. It'll be as though I had never previously solved it. And uh, before I get onto that, I would like to thank a few backers of my Patreon campaign. So thank you to Mitchell Turek, Jenny Montague, Lewis Williams. And as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark and the indomitable Shoalmaster for their support as benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. And if you would like to become a benefactor yourself and get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses official mug, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve or in the link in the description field underneath the video. And of course, by following that same link, you could of course become a patron at any level and get access to all of the bonus videos on the Patreon page. And thank you to everybody who has become a patron at any level, contributing any amount. I do very much appreciate that support. It help keep, helps keep this channel going. Um, also, in a link in the description field, you can find the Daily Solve Discord chat server. So nice, friendly chat community if you'd like to join that, if you're into Discord. And also, please do subscribe to the YouTube channel if you've been enjoying these videos. All right. All of that said, let's solve another one of these interesting, unique crosswords. Um, I don't see any illustrations in the grid as I did yesterday, so that was very uh, a very obvious example of something that was unique about that puzzle. This one, I don't yet know. So this was constructed by Patrick Berry, who I, I recognize in his, as an extremely prolific constructor of New York Times crosswords, over 200 puzzles to his name at this point, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving and see what is unique about this particular puzzle. I was wondering if maybe it wasn't going to be radially symmetric, but uh, no, it, it appears to be. So let's let's look. Earthquake related. Seismic is an adjective that describes things related to earthquakes. And Ollie G portrayer Sasha Baron Cohen, the actor who portrays Ollie G and um, Bo uh, Borat, for instance. Ball game bobble. Not sure what that is referring to. Public relations concern, image. Public relations is about managing your public image. Reticent is shy, maybe. You have a, you're, you're reticent. You have a shy personality. Project Apollo destination. Those were the moon landing missions. So the destination was the moon. Reason for missing work could be an illness. Oh, and interesting. That doesn't fit in the grid, which makes me wonder if, we, if there's a rebus in this puzzle. And if you're not familiar with rebuses, that's... That's a function by which you can enter more than one letter into a New York Times crossword cell. So, oops, I don't know if this is, I'm just putting this as an, as an example. I have no idea if this is actually how to, how to fill this particular clue. But uh, just to illustrate how that works, you could put two L's in there. I don't know if that doesn't necessarily look like, I don't think this is correct. But, um, oh, although this, you might put a fist through it. You might put a fist through the armhole of a shirt. So that does suggest to me that illness is probably in it's probably indeed correct, but I bet we will have to put a rebus in the grid. So can we figure out where it'll be? Art supplies since 1903. Oh, is Sasha spelled with a C? Because Crayola makes crayons. So right, I probably misspelled his name. So okay, so maybe Crayola. No, no, it'll just be the company, maybe. Crayola. Okay, never mind. I'm just trying to find ways to fit a rebus into here, but uh, stops, ceases, right? So this could also be a rebus. So, okay. Well, let's see. So if I did put NE, no, no, that doesn't look right. Requiring constant, never mind. I'm just trying to find any excuse to put these in, but, oh, wait a second. How does this ever work? If this is an N, 
surely we would need a vowel here. Hmm, well, now I really don't know what's going on. Okay, well, this we can certainly fill in. North by Northwest's opposite can only be South by Southeast, so that, that we can write straight into the grid. So this really looks like it should be N-E for illness. What am I missing? Requiring constant reassurance. Uneasy? No, I mean, that doesn't look right at all. And that makes, that turns moon into complete nonsense. Moo. I do not understand what's going on. It's only a Tuesday puzzle too. This is, this week might get difficult. So stops look like, looks like ceases to me. Requiring constant reassurance. Is there something about direction southeast? Maybe the opposite of that, northwest? I'm just sort of on my, that's on my mind because of the, um, this clue here, but it, it's probably grasping at straws. Oh, Interestingly, although, this one actually is also a compass direction, N-E. So the opposite of this one would be, no, that would be S-W, and that, that wouldn't work with this either. What is going on? <laughs> I do not know. Okay, so if this were an S, blank last bow. His, oh, his, his last bow, probably. Not bow, but bow in this case, Sherlock Holmes story. Does that work? Smitten. If you're smitten, you're in love, and... Quick on the uptake is sharp, maybe, or could be another rebus or something else. Belligerent son of Zeus could be Ares, the god of war. And a ball game bauble, oh, an error, I see. And then a gluttonous sort is a hog. Okay, so so <laughs> the regular clues are going in pretty, pretty smoothly, but I, there's something going on that I just don't understand. Parliamentary output could be the... the, the um, Parliament of a given country creates its law, the legislature, so law. And cowboy nickname, oh, maybe it's act. Uh, maybe it's act. Cowboy, because because cowboy nickname, I think, is probably Tex, is a kind of Old West sort of nickname. Um, ship to its captain is she, I guess. What was this? Do we look at this? Egypt's blank dam. Is it the Aswan Dam? That sort of sounds familiar. Is that what it is? Let's look at this. Stuff, stuff rubbed on skis, wax, you, uh, ski wax. Um, director with three films on AFI's list of 100 greatest movies, all of them silent. Oh, no, never mind. Oh, Chaplin, Charlie Chaplin would have directed, would have had a few films on that list and they would have all been silent. Well, not all necessarily. Um, most of his films were silent, but he did. Uh, the Great Dictator, for instance, was not. Okay, quick on the uptake. This does look like sharp. What am I missing about this crossword? <laughs> there is something I'm just not understanding. Eyepiece is... Um, a lens or something? I don't know. In the blank colony, Kafka story. Kindergarten, kindergartner stickum. What does that mean, stickum? A decal, maybe? No, I think that's right. That doesn't look good with this down. To give a speech is to orate. There we go. And repulsive is vile. So, an, oh, an eyepiece is an iris, literally part of your eye. There we go. It's on the wrong track with that. In the blank colony. Oh, in the penal colony, maybe? So... Once again, I'm trying desperately to fit rebuses in here. Does it is it going to work? Kindergartner Stickum. I don't know. Arthur of Tennis. Arthur Ashe was a great American tennis player. Plain blank, not sure. Start the pot. Ante. So the pot is in in a in a in a gambling context. Paste kindergartner stickum. I can tell there's something going on that I just that is that I haven't thought of yet, and it's it's really eluding me. It's so frustrating. Never before seen is all new, perhaps. Fall in winter, snow falls, which is happening right now in uh, here in London, which to to a much greater extent than it usually does. It's really something to see. As a result, ergo, so therefore, ergo, as a result, fabric used for suits is. Surge used for suits? I may not even be pronouncing that correctly. 
It is a kind of fabric. Let's keep going and see if that works. Barb in a bush could be a thorn in a rose bush, for instance. Some impressionist paintings. Monet's, maybe? Monet was an impressionist. Back to the future hero, Marty McFly. Okay, so yes, here's another, another place to put in a rebus. Could go here because... Oh, needy, maybe. Now, see, this works without needing any rebuses. But these don't. We're missing the S, and here we're missing the N. N, S. Where do they go? I don't understand. This looks like Foghorn. Yes, Looney Tunes character with a strong southern accent. Foghorn, Leghorn, the... Uh, what, rooster, I guess? Is that what foghorn leghorn is? Lotion ingredient. Oh, maybe it's Manet rather than Monet. And then aloe is a lotion ingredient. Once again, something going on that I, that I don't quite understand. It's like we're missing letters, but we don't put them in a, with a rebus. So things to wear are clothes. Yuletide quaff, quaff is nog, as an eggnog. And I love Lucy roll as Ethel. So one of Lucy's, Lucy and... Uh, and Ricky's neighbors. Okay, to ogle somebody is to leer at them. Oh, plain Jane, that's a phrase to indicate sort of just ordinary. Deja vu. So kindergartner stick them, just paste, I guess. So we're missing, once again, we're sort of missing out a letter here. Makes me want to put A back into S1 because I guess there's no rebus. I just don't understand. I think I'm probably doing this correctly, I suppose. And then I can see what's happening is that we're missing letters from certain down uh, clues, but they don't end up getting entered into the grid. I'm curious to see if anything happens once we submit this. I'm Henry VIII, I am banned. Uh, not sure. Coupes and sedans are autos. Those are, so coupes are two-door cars and sedans are four-door cars. Fisherman's purchase could be a net, maybe. If you're not fooled by something, you're onto it. So this could be another one of those missing letter situations. A flapper accessory. So flapper could be a sort of 19, the, the sort of 1920s, uh, you know, flapper girls kind of archetype. I'm not sure if that's what it's referring to. A blockhead could be an ass. Um, flapper accessory, what is it? Could be a boa, maybe? Fisherman's, oh, bait, maybe a fisherman's purchase. So I'm not sure which letter would be missing then. Not fooled by onto, right again, I'm not sure which letter is missing. What about this one? A lot. And list ending abbreviation, etc. maybe? Oh, a lot could be much. Maybe the eighth I am banned. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> what is going on here? So what if I did put this in illness? Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Sorry if you were way ahead of me on this. Ah, I feel I feel like a total fool. Okay, so the way this works is we do put the rebus in to the down clues, and then it makes two different plausible... Oh, no, I see. It's a compound answer. It's Crayola crayons. So Crayola is one of the things spelled here with these rebuses. And then Crayons is the second one. Wow, that is extremely clever. So if you see what I mean, I, I, if we could position these vertically, it would make more sense, um, these rebuses. So, so in other words, if the LA were next to one another and then the LA were next to one another and the NS were next to one another underneath, then we would see written out Crayola Crayons and that would also properly spell the down answers of illness and ceases. So this is going to be foghorn leghorn. Right. Okay. 
I see. Um, oops, oops, oops. Um, yes. So here we have what looks like Flogorn, but in fact is Foghorn Leghorn, if we follow that same principle of reading these down rather than, than reading the rebuses in a down order rather than across. This is so clever. I, it took me ages to figure this out. Okay, so uh, quick on the uptake was sharp. Was that the only one here? So what? As one, no, this can't be right. Something else is going on. Oh, it's Charlie Chaplin. Charlie Chaplin. Sharp goes here. This is so clever. So this will be an yes, and this would this needed penal to go in. There we go. So Charlie Chaplin, and that makes sharp down and penal over here. Charlie Chaplin reads across. This is this is great. Uh, what a real delayed delayed understanding on my part as well. Delayed comprehension. Okay, so so this one we can fill in now. Fishman's purchase is bait, and not fooled by his on to. Oh oh, it's Herman's Hermits, the band from the sixties. Ah, okay. I don't think I know this song. I'll have to look it up. So Herman's Hermits. There we go. On to bait. Wow, I wonder how long it took me to get this back in 2015. I certainly have no memory of this whatsoever. Um, it was seven years ago, so that seems fair enough. Okay, there we go. So now going forward, this will be a little bit easier. Uniform wearing group is, don't know. Component of natural gas is ethanol or something maybe? PC key could be escape or enter or something. What else? Indira Gandhi International Airport site. Um, well, it'll be in India, obviously. Um, I mean, Delhi would be the, mo the most obvious sort of major city. I don't actually know if that's the answer. It uses a divining rod. Okay, well, this is douses, to douse for water with a divining rod. So that does suggest this probably is Delhi. I don't know which cell the extra letter will go in if it is. Southernmost Great Lake. Um, I certainly don't have this as knowledge in my head, but in four letters, perhaps it must be Erie, Lake Erie, I would think. That does work with Delhi as well, so that, that further constrains where the extra, where the rebus entry would need to go. Show the ropes to is train or... Hmm, actually not sure what that is. Radioers, I'll do it. Wilco, Roger Wilco is something that people say over the radio. So Wilco, I guess, means I'll do it. Roger, I guess, means I've sort of, I've heard you. Uh, I guess that must be it. Uh, doesn't stay on the shelves. This thing doesn't stay on the shelves in a store. It sells. So there we go. The Little Foxes Playwright. Um, I'm not sure offhand. What about this? Make Room For is un clog that doesn't really work um discards tosses maybe throws something in the bin show the ropes to oh orient maybe you orient somebody in a new job a new position so that means one of these two little foxes playwright or make room for is going to be one of these sort of reduplicative answers so let's let's keep solving for the time being Blank in the morning radio show. Oh, I, I mean, there used to be, I don't know if he's still around, there used to be in the US a sort of shock jock radio host type called Imus. So this could be one of those. Once again, I'm not sure where the extra letter would go. When I say one of those, I mean one of those rebus, uh, one of those rebus answers. So yeah, that, that fits because I think both of these need to already be that. Here we have fruit drink suffix aid as in limeade or lemonade. And dollar bills are ones, I suppose. This looks like include, yes. Make room for is include. So that means here is where we put our remiss ent entry. So I miss in the morning. Uh, show the ropes to is orient. This is Delhi after all. So here we have, uh, oh, Lillian Hellman. Okay. So I do know of Lillian Hellman. I don't think the little foxes. I know off the top of my head. So, but but the name, the name is familiar enough to be confident in the the crosses. Boy, what a clever, what a what a good um, crossword this is. 
Nebraska's largest city, Omaha, Nebraska, uniform wearing group is a team. Oh, that was simpler than I was trying to make it. PC key starting with an A. Oh, alt is a, is a key on Windows keyboards. Um, badge wearer is, not sure. This does look like ethanol, doesn't it? So it'll probably need an X, it'll probably need a rebus cell. And foppish neckwear could be an ascot. So here's, this will be another one of these adjacent, which makes sense. They do tend to go together. Here, unsubtle performers could be hams. You ham it up, you really emote. Uh, you wear your emotion on your sleeve. And here, amino acid, maybe? Let's double check the crosses on that. Pharaoh of Zelig, Mia Pharaoh, was in the film Zelig, the Woody Allen film, I think. And Bowlful next to a restaurant's cashier is, oh, mint. you could have a bowl of mints in a restaurant. Most prudent as advice, the sagest maybe? So that'll need another rebus as well. Actual amount paid is what, the final bill or the gross or something? Not sure, I mean gross sort of fits here but I don't really think it's a good answer. Sanctifies with oil is anoints, okay great. So that doesn't need any rebus cells. So that can go straight in the grid. And a fruit drink brand, oh, high C. Once again, I'm not sure if that's still around. It probably is. So that, but that, that's a that's a fruit, fruit drink brand, a sort of sugary fruit drink brand, I think. Laundromat fixture is, oh, a machine, a washing machine. Okay, great. So, or is it? Maybe it's a, maybe it's a something machine. It could be a two word phrase, actually. I'm not sure which. Badge wearer. I just don't know the answer to this one, actually. Oh, no, but if this is ethanol, then this would need to be the, oh, well, okay, so this could just be machine for the laundromat. Okay, so let's let's look at this again. Foppish, oh, no, 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 never mind. Oh, maybe it's, no, no, ethane, ethane, that sounds right. Okay, so maybe this is the thing, and then here we have the ascot. Okay, so I was on the wrong track entirely with the component of natural gas. Ethane sounds more correct for natural gas anyway. So laundromat fixture is, oh, a, a washing machine. So this will be the G, that makes sense, S-A-G-E-S-T, great. And then W-M goes here. Oh, because a badge wearer is a lawman. So in kind of an Old West context, you have a sheriff with a badge and they're referred to as a lawman. So there we go. And then this would be net cost, the actual amount paid. That fits. And is this the solution? It is. There we go. Well, I found that much more difficult than yesterday's, that's for sure. Yesterday's had sort of a, a cute theme with the illustration. This one really required me to puzzle through what was going on in order to solve it. Um, I've really had to actively figure this out, and it eluded me for quite some time. Let me know in the comments, actually, if you caught on to this earlier than I did, or or the other way around. I don't know. Either way, either way I'm always curious to know. There's always good discussion about that sort of thing in the Discord as well. Uh, so here we had... Crayola crayons for the art supplies since 1903. The Looney Tunes character was Foghorn Leghorn. The director with three films on the AFI's 100 Greatest was Charlie Chaplin. The band behind I'm Henry the Eighth I Am was Herman's Hermits. And what else? The Little Fox's playwright, Lillian Hellman. And finally, the laundromat fixture is Washing Machine. I really like, I mean, some of these are, you know, Foghorn Leghorn, that name is obviously intentionally kind of rhyming in that particular way. So it sort of makes sense that, that this would be possible. But some of these like washing machine, you don't really think of it as a word that could be kind of duplicated, you know, reduplicated in this manner by just changing a few letters because we pronounce washing and machine. The ends of those words don't match up. Obviously, we're changing the last letter, but uh, it's just, it's clever. It's a very clever little inversion of language here. Um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. And if you're new, if, if you solved this puzzle and you were new to the concept of rebuses and a New York Times crossword, I have to imagine this would this would absolutely confound you because how, could, how would you ever know to do this if you weren't familiar with with uh, the concept of being able to enter multiple letters into a New York Times crossword? It's it's so elusive. But um, yeah, I, so I'm always curious how people fare with that when it's new to them. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, maybe in part because I, I found that I found this uh, this bit such 
such a, uh, a tricky spot. But there we go. That was it for Tuesday of this uh, look back into a historical week of interesting New York Times crosswords. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow one way or the other with either the Daily Puzzle or another one of these retrospective solves. Uh, either way, hope to see you again. But until then, please do take care.